Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and today's video is going to be a lot different to the usual enthusiast tech price performance stuff that you get in your sub boxes. And that's because this here sort of alarmed me about some of the dangers that can exist in your own home. So I decided to do before and after tests here at my own studio because when I first came to Japan, I was having some issues, especially with my ears ringing and also just not sleeping that well in general. So I decided to try and break it down to what possibly could be affecting my health in a detrimental way. And I decided, well, I know for a fact that J Japan has a problem with not having enough ground outlets or earthing outlets on their power points. And I know since when I was a kid, my dad always told me you should always ground your electronics any given time, that stuff should always be grounded. And then I started reading up and the advice was, well, you don't really need to ground your stuff, but I know from personal experience when I haven't grounded my computer in the past, I've had issues where it was just weird humming going through the PC. And so I immediately knew that you should be grounding your electronics when you can, but also when you're not grounding your electronics, you should be keeping them away from you as far as possible. Now, I thought, okay, maybe in my apartment, I'm living about probably about 300 meters away from big power lines. Perhaps that's causing the uh, EMF that we're seeing in the readouts here. But when I started testing that, it was really giving out nothing significant. It wasn't going to affect my health, basically, at least from what this device was telling me right here. Now, this device is an EMF reader. You can get it off Amazon for about $32. And essentially going to give you two different fields of readout that's going to tell you if it's safe to be near that in especially in the long term and so if this thing starts flashing red basically you shouldn't be working there especially for long hours near that zone that's flashing red and so what you saw here in the intro was me uh, showing you one of the pc uh, setups that i have that was grounded and this device was basically right up against the monitor and it was giving still a blue reading but then when I put it up against a monitor that's even turned off but it's just on standby and that's not grounded that was giving out a very dangerous reading so what we're gonna do right here for you guys today is I'm now gonna ground this PowerPoint outlet and start giving this monitor and also the other hardware attached to that power board grounded power so let's get into that right now, but also you may have noticed I have tested some other devices out here and they were giving out some pretty scary readings and unfortunately those devices don't have the option to ground the power because they've only got two prongs that go into those devices. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's see though the before and after. So since it is Japan, a lot of power points just won't have grounding ports on them and so what I've done to sort of alleviate this issue is first of all, we've got this power board here, which is actually a really cool design. And it's one of the only few that I could find in Japan at a place called Kind's Home. And you see here, it's got the uh, three prongs on the actual power board itself. And then on the main switch going into the wall, it's got the standard connect to the earth point Japanese style model. However, since this power point here that I'm using near my workstation that doesn't have any earth points on it. I've actually had to run, like I think it's about six or seven meters in total. I've had to run this whole earth wire all the way from my aircon port, which is right up here. You can see we've had to run it all the way from here, down the wall, all the way over to our point over here. And so what I'm gonna be doing now is actually cutting this little bit off here and then splicing it into that point over there and then um, grounding essentially not just that power board, but also this power board here too.
And now that this PowerPoint and this PowerPoint going to the monitor are now grounded, it is time for us to rerun these tests where I believe before we saw pushing the uh, meter up to the monitor, we saw up to 200. So it's the moment of truth. And after doing a quick test around this motherboard and also right up to the monitor, we've got pretty much a tenfold drop in the meter readings. And also holding it around here, it's not going red anymore. So that's just absolutely incredible to the point where I think it's now time to go back to the drawing board and give you guys a conclusion, just tips and what my findings are in today's video here. So there it is with the before and after. Grounding the electronics makes a huge difference, at least in my studio here and from what I'm showing you guys in today's video, where this meter was going red at this exact same spot before I grounded my main system. And showing you guys my benchmark uh, system over there where I test stuff out, whether it's used or new gear, that was just going red before we grounded it. And then afterwards, we got a much lower reading on the electronics. So something to take out of this video would be to make sure if you're using electronics day in, day out near them, I would make sure that those electronics are grounded or earthed. And also if you've got uh, devices or say for instance, a mobile phone charger, I would definitely not have that within two meters of where you're either working for long periods of time at home or where you're sleeping. So those two prong devices that don't have any earthing or grounding, I would keep them again, around two meters away from where you are for long periods of time. And so that's what I've found here. There's some devices that just don't have earthing or grounding ports and you need them. For instance, my lighting that just beeps off red, even when it's off and plugged into the wall, but I need lighting to give you guys uh, YouTube videos and, and do a uh, certain filming of products and on top of that i just don't know how to ground those devices without making a mess of the electronics actually if someone does have a solution for that then do let us know in the comment section below but my solution for the time being is any electronics that are not grounded i like to keep them about two meters away from me i find that's when the meter it started dropping off a lot to the point where it's insignificant was when these devices were about two meters away or more Anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And also if you know someone in Japan or if you're living in Japan yourself, you may want to ground your electronics, especially if it's your main computer that you're using for long hours. I know PewDiePie recently moved to Japan. So maybe if he's having some problems sleeping or if his ears are ringing, then you can just link him this video and that might help him out. <laughs> Anyhow guys, with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Oh wait, we've also got the question of the day, which comes from IT News, and they ask, how about new graphics cards? What price is it like a Zeus Evangelion version or like high-end 3080 Ti, 3090, 3090 Ti? So they're talking about our recent parts hunt that we did in Tokyo. I'll put the link to that video up here where we uh, were looking for mainly used parts, but I did notice the prices of new graphics cards were also coming down as well. I didn't really check the 3080 Ti or the 3090 or 3090 Ti, I just think the prices of those graphics cards at this point in time are just too expensive. I mean, in that realm of graphics cards, I'd be looking for a 3080 anyhow, and I'd be looking for it much closer to its original MSRP, especially since now that the mining demand for new graphics cards has come down significantly, and I do expect it to come down even more to the point where I feel like graphics cards will get a lot cheaper in the next coming few months. Though in terms of whether they're a good deal or not, me quickly glancing over prices of those cards, they weren't as cheap as they were in Australia, especially when the cards were on sale in Australia. But keep in mind, I feel like Australia actually this year has had some of the best graphics card prices in the world. But hey, if I'm buying something, I'm always gonna wanna get it at the best price. Anyhow guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.